Hi. Oh, I think I'm live. <laughs> Hi, I'm Susan Kennard, and I just wanted to talk to you about something that's very, very dear to my heart because I've worked uh, with clients for sort of nearly 25, 30 years, and one of the things that I help people do is release trauma. I'm talking about emotional trauma, not physical trauma like an accident or something like that. And so I specialize in PTSD. One of the things about post-traumatic stress is that we activate our sympathetic nervous system, right? Which is our fight and flight, cortisol, adrenaline, that part of our body, which you've probably heard of, like even if you don't know about PTSD, you will have definitely heard that people go into fight and flight when they're in a fear response. So when we're looking at what's going on uh, within our immune system, which is obviously the talk of the town at the moment, when we are in stress, literally that word stress, we shut down our immune system. So essentially what happens is that our body no longer is able to produce healthy cells. So it's a vibrational equivalent of uh, re reproducing healthy cells all of the time. And when we think of uh, the liver, it reproduces its cells every six weeks. So we have six weeks chance uh, to reproduce our cells in our liver. And that's why when you go to the doctor and you take a medication, they say, come back in four to six weeks. Well, the reason for that is that it takes that amount of time for the body to actually adjust to this new um, chemical that's being put into the body. OK, so that makes sense. So when we look at what is going on in the world now, and this is really my focus for this uh, video, is we're looking at huge stress. OK, so we're looking at fear um, written in capital letters in front of us. So what that does is that word fear activates, this is my opinion, um, activates the stress hormone within our body. So what happens when we go into stress, we're essentially simulating, I'm sure you've heard of this before, but this fight and flight running from a tiger aspect. Of course, we're not running from a tiger now, but we are still going into that um, kind of restriction within our digestion within our extremities and we only need the major organs to survive because we are running okay so what happens with that well each one of those organs especially the adrenals on top of our kidneys which sit on the top of our um, part of the endocrine gland sit on the top of our kidneys then that is the first place for our stress to be shown in our physical being okay so uh, just give you a bit of background. I trained in psychology and psychotherapy, but I trained as a naturopath as well. And I also trained in meta health, which essentially is looking at the metaphysical cause for dis-ease. So we look at the brain relays, we look at how dis-ease is formed and how we can heal that from the perspective of the trauma line. So we look at the emotional causal reason metaphysically um, for that. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a GP, and I'm not talking about you not seeing a doctor, okay? That is your free will, and I would never tell you not to, and I'd never tell you to take or not take medication. But I work with people every day of the week that have had diagnosis, whether that is with um, an emotional diagnosis, like a depression or whatever it might be, or whether it's a physical message in the body, such as cancer or, or whatever else. And so I've worked with this for many, many years. And so what I'm talking to you about is something that I use every day of the week in my practice, okay? So what I really wanted to say was that when we are in this space of fight and flight, we are essentially in that sympathetic nervous system, which produces many different hormones. They're called stress hormones. Okay, so what happens to our immune system then is our immune system says, well, actually, you know, I just need to survive. So I'm not going to produce healthy cells. Well, what does that do? Well, that actually stops your body from recreating new cellular structure, if that makes sense. So essentially what, what we're doing there is we're shutting down our ability to reproduce 
a new, these are my words, but a new message within the body. Okay, so you have one message in the body, which is maybe a diagnosis or whatever it might be. And then we have the ability to transform that message in the body by change and creating new healthy cellular structure okay and there are many things uh, that we need to do for that but the key thing that i found is when we heal the fear and the shock of the news of diagnosis okay so this is key to our healing journey why is it key well if you think about the shock and the trauma that you might hold um so for example the way it works is we get told something um, that shocks us, it goes into our heart, up to our brain relays, um, whichever brain relay is relative to the shock, and then into our physical field. So into our field, but into our physical body. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that every single time we have a shock or we see something on the news that makes us feel upset or angry or shocked, that we have a physical message in our body. That isn't how it is. It's over time and it's also depending on the degree of shock, if that makes sense, okay? So it depends on the degree and over time, how many times we repeat that perception of belief around fear and shock, okay? So when we think of what's going on in the world, we are bombarded and, you know, it's not often I speak like this about what's going on in the world because I tend to tone it down a bit. But we're being bombarded with stress. We're being bombarded with fear and the narrative is fear. So what happens with the narrative of fear is it excites within us aspects, maybe of childhood, maybe of times before, maybe if we're not feeling very well anyway and we have a diagnosis for something else. It, it excites us in the sense of an excitatory mode within our consciousness to say, oh my goodness, I need to be on high alert. So what that does is it goes into the central nervous system, which is our sympathetic nervous system, and then it creates those stress hormones which shut down the digestive system and shut down the immune system makes sense really of what's going on in the world doesn't it so when we shut down the immune system what's the outcome of that short term it's okay short term that's okay our immune system can you know it can survive it's fine as long as we breathe in oxygen which is who we are really we breathe in oxygen and we recover and we're able to um, spend time with people we're able to bring back that sense of ourself and who we are and we have that sense of community again, which is what being human is, and we're able to be in service. Those are the key things. If that doesn't happen and we're constantly bombarded with this narrative of fear, then our, our emotional system creates the immune system to shut down. So what happens when scientifically when our immune system shuts down is we're more susceptible to colds, flus, you know, anything to do with the body because the body hasn't got the energy and this is how I kind of want to explain it. The body hasn't got the energy to actually release those aspects that are coming in through the mouth and then the bouncers at the door are your tonsils and they go in, your, the bouncers go, no, you're not coming in, your name isn't on the list as they would in a club and uh, it stops that from going into your respiratory. But when your immune system is broken down or diminished, then what happens to your body? Well, you're unable, it's not fighting, we don't talk about fight or battle, that's not what we talk about, but your immune system finds it much harder to be able to access what it's supposed to do, which is to just literally release whatever comes into the body. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Then when we're looking, hi Torgan, hi Kristen, hi Sherry, thank you for being here, it's lovely to, for you, to see you. Um, so what we're seeing now and what we are going to see more of is more people showing signs of a deliberated immune system. But then what do we go and do? 
we put something over our face, won't mention the name, we put something over our face which stops us from breathing in that incredible oxygen that we can really create a beautiful space for us to release anything that is not really for us. You know, we might breathe it in, whatever it might be, and we're not actually able to, with something over our face, we are creating a space where our immune system is not able to actually protect, okay? And that's what essentially what it does. So what we want to be able to do is completely flip this narrative on its head. So we forget about um, the thing that you put in your arm or wherever else it might be. Forget about that. Forget about anything else. We're not talking about that here. That's a free choice. That's a, um, a freedom of choice for yourself. Definitely here in the UK, we do not have to do anything medical. It's our choice, it's our sovereignty, it's our body. Let's just think about, which is what I really want to work with, is those feelings of fear. And fear, essentially, is something, false evidence appearing real. So it's something that we have been told is true. Well, when you see yourself as uh, an incredible being that has the ability to change and create and heal themselves, then there isn't any fear. All there is, is trust in a complete ability to remember who you are. Okay? So just take a breath on that for a moment. Just put your hand on your heart and just take a breath on that for a moment. Okay. This body is an incredible barometer for your soul. And whether you believe in soul, whatever you believe in it, it really doesn't matter to me. If you can take something away from this, and we're going to do a little process, I feel, I'm kind of been guided to do that, to release some stress. So if you take anything away from this, know that every time you watch the news, Every time you listen to somebody else in a fear state, every time you stop yourself from really knowing who you are, you go into that fight and flight, that PTSD, that part of you that shuts down your immune system. Just have a think about that for a moment. Yeah. We think that we are doing what we should do. We're good little boys and girls, okay? But think about what this narrative is. What would be the reason why everyone needed to shut down their immune system? I'm not going to answer it for you. I just want you to think about it. When we think about a health service, okay? I'm not going to say the full word because of the censorship. A health service. A health service is for health. Okay, so we should be teaching people how to boost their immune system, how to live a life releasing fear, not putting more fear into our systems by TV, by media, by a narrative that seems to be plugged in day in, day out. Just question that for a moment. It's time to question. It's time to think about, am I being told exactly how it is? And is it time for me to really go within, I don't mean physically within, but go within and question? Now, I'll never tell you what to do, never. I'll always bring the space to release the trauma of the fear, the shock of the news, the diagnosis, the childhood trauma, the birth trauma, the growing in the womb trauma. I'll always work with that. I'll never tell you what to do. Because I don't have any gain for it. All I want is for you to feel that you have the power to remember who you are. And when you remember who you are, that's it. You then understand that your body is a barometer. 
you then understand that there is no separation between your mind, your body and your soul. It's an integrated being. Is it time for us to have an incredible integrated model to help people heal? I think it is. I've thought about it for years, but I think it is time. We need the medical model 100% and we need it for operations. We need it for accidents and trauma that way, physical trauma. We need it for acute situations. We do not need it for chronic situations. A chronic situation is something that has been played out and played out and played out within our mind, within our consciousness, within our field, and then shows up as a message for us to listen to. Okay? And I'm not just saying this from, you know, a woo-woo perspective. I trained for many, many, many years in this work. And I studied viruses for a long time as well, and bacteria. But that's another story. But let's just come into our heart space. Let's just do a little bit of, I think there's some, some other people saying hi. Sorry, Jane, I didn't see you there. Hi, Jane. Hi, Lansing. You could say I'm getting on my soapbox, Lansing. Okay, and Kristen. So let's just come into our heart space. And just feel for a moment. If you've been questioning this narrative in the world, whatever country you're in, if you've been confused by this narrative and there's been something inside you that has said, I'm just not sure, then that's the start of an awakening. It's the start of you questioning, wondering, Is it possible that I have the power to change and create anything? So I just want you to come into your heart just for a moment. Close your eyes if you can. I'll keep mine open for the purpose of the video. And behind your hands, just imagine this beautiful golden sparkling light. And imagine that light expanding throughout the whole of your body and imagine your body becoming that light and imagine that earth star grounding you into the earth and that soul star above your head connecting you to the universe and beyond so just see yourself as that light If that light knew who you were, who would you be? Who would you be if you didn't have this jacket, which was a physical body? What would you choose to do in this time that you have here? If there was no restrictions with money or space or time, you can step in again and say, this is what I'm going to do. This is who I am, who I'm meant to be. Who would you be? How would you help others? How would you do that? This is the key to remembering. This is the key to remembering that you really can change anything. Don't listen to what others say. Listen to what you know is your truth. Question what you see in the narrative of the news. Question what you see when you walk around in the place where you live. Does it seem right to you? Maybe it does. 
I don't know who you are, what you choose, what you believe, that's your choice. I make my choices from the place that I know is my truth. And you need to make the choices where you know it's your truth. Nobody else's truth but yours. So just come in for a moment and just tell me, maybe tell me what your truth is, but just be aware of the censorship. Yeah. Do you believe that you are a creator being? Do you believe that you have the ability to change and create and heal yourself? Do you believe in everything you're told? And one of the things, how you can really tell if something is true for you is how does it feel when that's said? How does it feel when I hear that? Does it feel light or does it feel heavy? Do I drop into a space of fear? Or do I drop into a space of, oh, yeah, that's possible. There is an open door of possibility. Mm. This is how you can really know. And another really fun thing to do is to imagine, perhaps, you know, you could put the word fear on your hand and the word love on your hand. I don't mean write it, but just imagine it sitting there. And how does the fear one feel? Do they feel equal? Does this one, the, the love one, feel a bit kind of lighter? And the fear one feel heavier? Feel into it. I know the one I'd like to have in my physical body and in my field of light. I want to have the love vibration. I don't want to have the fear one. What good does that do me? A heavy vibration, that doesn't give me any clarity. So I think it's time to question. It's time to wonder. And from a questioning comes empowerment. I think for so many years we have accepted what we're told from perhaps a white coat worker. We're, we've accepted what is true that we read in the newspapers or we hear on the news. We believe it to be true. I think now is the time to question that. And I started questioning it because I started to see that what I knew was my truth around dis-ease and consciousness that I've been teaching for many years. And what I knew about the cells in the body and what I knew about how, as Bruce Lipton talks about, the environment of the cell affects our cellular reproduction, essentially, reproducing cells, it didn't make sense to me. None of, none of this made sense to me. Scientifically, none of it made sense. And I'm questioning, why are there medical scientists speaking about this when this doesn't make any sense scientifically at all? That made me question. And so it, it just, that was my questioning the whole year ago. When I got back from San Diego, speaking at the New Media Summit in San Diego, and that weekend I got back, Trump closed the borders of America. But I was never scared of flying to America in that early March. I was never, I was never scared of it. Because I know that my body is connected to my consciousness. And because I don't have fear, I don't create that within my body. 
my immune system is strong. Yeah. And I know I can change and create anything. So as much as my family was scared about me, not my kids, but my family, extended family, were scared about me getting on a plane at the time of, you know, what was going on in the world, I didn't have any fear about it. And I said to my children, do you honestly think that if I was scared, I would go? And they said, no. I said, so you have to trust that. So when we have knowledge, we can make choices from that place of knowledge. Don't just believe everything you hear. Sorry, it's actually my mum calling. <laughs> she must have felt it. So don't just believe everything you hear because it's, it's not always true. Sometimes it's not. Have a think about it. Do some research. Don't just accept one narrative to another. Don't accept what I'm saying. Go and research it. You know, we used to believe in pastures, Beauchamp and pasture. We built our whole understanding of germ theory around Louis Pasteur. The doctors are still taught in the same way about germ theory, that you have to kill it. But what we're doing by having that thought and that narrative is that we're actually killing ourselves. So when we're saying, I have to fight this, when we're saying, I have to kill this germ, when we're saying that as a narrative, all of the time. What we're doing is we're putting that narrative into ourselves. Yeah. We are a production of the vibrational set point of our emotions, of our perception of belief. It's not just about thinking positively, right? It's also about really releasing those old fears and traumas, of course. It's also about releasing toxicity from your body, not putting more into it, but releasing it. But the key thing is releasing these unwanted emotions that have led you to believe that there is something to be afraid of. On my website, there's a free event uh, that I held a few weeks ago, and it's called The Fear of Dying. It might help you if you fancy it. Just go on to susankennard.co.uk and go to where the replays are. There's replays of all my retreats, but if you go on there, there's uh, a picture with a candle, candle light, and under it, you click the button, replay, and that's a whole two hours healing regarding the fear of dying. So feel free to definitely experience that and release some of those fears. Because it's not never from today. Today just triggers the fear of dying, right? It's not from today. So question, question, question. Don't accept, just question. And all the time you question, you're going to start to build up a belief system that comes from your own truth and not from someone else's truth. It's not about listening to what somebody else has to say. It's a time to actually go within your own knowing, your own truth and trust what your gut is telling you. Trust it but not from a place of fear. Say to yourself, maybe, if I didn't feel this fear, would I make that choice? If I didn't feel this fear, would I do that? If I didn't feel this fear, would I say that? Yeah, it might help. 
Oh, hi, Corinne. <laughs> Just saw you pop up. <sighs> has anyone got anything? Yeah, hi. Hi, Vanessa. I just kind of have soapbox moments sometimes, you know. I work with two amazing clients today and, you know, both of them healing themselves. You know, one, one of the things that I love working with is medication, right? So when we have a medication that we're taking, I'm not to say you do or you don't take them, it doesn't matter to me. When you have a medication that perhaps you've been taking for a very long time, when you actually work with releasing the emotion connected to that word it is fascinating and I've worked with several people many people but several people recently who have been on medication and I've never said don't take it that's not my job being not being a doctor I would never say that but when they work with the word when they look at the word and they feel into what it brings up for them when we clear that emotion and sometimes there's two or three there's layers then the message that was held in the body i.e thyroid you know um, messages for example thyroxine that you're told to take for the rest of your life right um when we heal the emotions that are associated to that medicine or that chemical that you put in your body the message is no longer in the body. Now, that to me is cool. You know, if anything, that is one of my favorite things because we can be on a medication that perhaps we don't wanna be on. We might wanna be on it, but if we're on it, it's usually because it's come from a place of fear, right? Or we're on that because if we're not on it, then this will happen. And that's probably true, okay? But it's only true because the body needed it at that point. It's possible that the body doesn't need it when we heal the emotional cause or metaphysical reason for why you needed to take it in the first place. I have to say, this is probably gonna be in my second book <laughs> as I'm talking about it. So I feel like it's really important that if anyone is um, feeling a sense of you know, I've been taking this for 20 years or even 10 years or whatever it might be. And you live your life thinking, if I don't have that, then this might happen. That might be the time to release the, this might happen. Yeah. From the narrative that's held in the physical body as a message. It's possible. I was listening to a lady, um, she did a video actually, and it's in America. And she'd gone to pick up her son's insulin and uh, I know because um, the obviously management, I'll say, of America has changed, I'll call it management, uh, has changed um, over to somebody else. And since it changed over to the other person, the cost of this insulin had gone up, like tripled. Yeah. And so she was in tears and she just didn't know what to do. She didn't know how she was going to afford to buy this and pay for this for her children, for her child, a little boy. And she was on a video and she was so angry. Yeah, which is which is fight and flight, right? What What's gonna happen if I can't provide this for my child? Yeah. So there's, there's gonna be a lot of changes going on with situations like that. Um, perhaps where we can't get what we thought we needed. It might be time to release some of those stuck emotions. Anyway, I could spend hours talking about my favorite subjects. Um, let me just see. Oh, thanks, Torgan. Thank you for being you and the contribution. Well, this is my mission, Torgan. Like, you know, this is my job. You know, if I can help people feel empowered and wake up to their own knowing of who they are, then that's my job, yeah? And however I do that, you know, I will only ever do it from a place of my own research, knowledge and experience. I will not do it from a place of hearing it from someone else. Yeah, so I speak from a place of integrity and a place of truth. 100% because I've seen it many times. I've seen people heal. I've seen people heal themselves of cancer and everything. 
I've seen it, so I know it happens. Um, it's so frustrating to have all the people around you not see this. Well, it's not frustrating. It's just, I do get what you're saying. It's not frustrating. It just um, makes me more driven to uh, release messages so that people can, you know, I run the retreats twice a month to help people heal. I run the moons, which are donation, um, the astrological aspects of what's going on in the world, which are donation based twice a month. I have a free, obviously I do these, I have a free YouTube channel, I have a podcast, Spiritual Awakener, which is where I interview amazing healers and, you know, all over the world. So I offer lots of ways of helping people, um, even if they literally can't afford to do anything. So yeah, just makes me more driven, really. It makes me more focused on um, reaching a broader audience. It makes me more focused on speaking my truth but i do it in a way where i'm not going to be censored i'm not going to be pulled down because i don't think it's about shouting I, I don't think it's about that i think it's about just empowering people to think for themselves and the key thing is you know perhaps before we believed you know we believed everything we were told and that's okay because, you know, we, we come from that era. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm 51 and I come from the era of, you know, you went to the doctor and the doctor told you and that was it. That's what I was brought up with. It's the same as different religions. We're told that's how it is. But when we, when we question something, people get really upset when we question things because it is literally like changing a religion. When we, when we flip our narrative, to oh i wonder if i am this incredible being of like well actually i don't need someone to tell me what to do i can make those choices myself then what happens my goodness we have all these people standing in their power well what happens when we stand in our power then the restrictions and the control get stronger and stronger and stronger but they can only get that way if we allow it and it's not about breaking down barriers or anything, physical barriers, or charging into places. It's not about that. It's about doing the inside job. You know, we, we are an inside job. You have to change us before everything else changes. There's no way getting angry about what happens in a shop or angry what happens on the street. We've got to do the inside work. Would you say, Vesa, we are at the point of having to get a get a, a something, to, yeah, yeah, to be allowed to go in, in our house? Oh, right, where is that? In Holland. I used to live there. The people here in Holland just believe everything in the government. Hmm, yeah. Well, I lived there for two and a half years, actually. Yeah, that was a long time ago now, though. Um, but there's a, there was, there's a really um, community feel out there as well where the mothers didn't have to go to work like they were supported by the government for a long time and um, it, it was a different way of being than it was here in the UK at that time yeah but it's obviously changed yeah so we can't I mean we can't get someone to change their mind and that's not what it's about but it's definitely about helping people feel empowered it's definitely about helping people realise that they do have a choice and that even if they feel like they don't have a choice, then even if there's one thing in their life that they know that they can have a choice about, then that's a really good thing because that's a step in the right direction. But I'm not a fan of CBT or changing behaviour. I'm a fan of doing the inner work, which is held at cellular level. And that's why I work on the deepest level of releasing the beliefs and trauma. But I must go now because I need to go and make some tea for my uh, little ones uh, so that they're fed and watered. And uh, thanks so much for listening. I, I hope it all makes sense to you. Feel free to share this video. Um, I would appreciate it if there aren't any, you know, um, 
conversations in the thread that would get it pulled off that would be really helpful um it's fine to say how you feel but perhaps word it in a way that it won't get taken off because it'd be i really appreciate that um and if we can spread the word and get more people to realize the science of what happens through stress and fear the science of our immune system and also go over to my website for that free event which is on replay now um, called fear of dying so susankennard.co.uk go onto my website you'll see that you'll see it in the replays and and you can just download it and listen to it okay all right everybody i will see you soon and much love for now bye